Really that it added an extra layer of stress and dysfunction on top of years of unaddressed trauma. With my, my black male clients, I see a lot more kind of frustration and just, I guess, lack of motivation. It's healthy to be outraged about outrageous things. The question just becomes, what do I do with the frustration? What do I do with my anger? What do I do with my fears? We have so many people who just don't want to admit that they're depressed. You know, there is, you know, the myth of the strong black woman or the capable black man who is taking care of everything. So nobody wants to say, you know, I'm struggling. It's like the younger generation, millennials, you know, kudos to them, they, they make stuff happen. You are expected to be engaging in actively addressing your own mental health. It is now getting to a place where it's on par with physical health. If you're making your body look good, why aren't you doing the same with your mind? In times when people are losing their jobs, they're losing family members, you know, they're losing marriages, we have to find ways to connect. With 46 million black Americans facing the realities of COVID-19, racism, and everyday stressors, and other forms of oppression, mental health services are needed. Welcome to Black Minds Matter. I'm Dr. Taylor, and I'm glad to be your host. I'm a licensed psychologist, professor, an ordained minister in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. And on this program, I will be bringing you on the front lines with black mental health professionals who are serving our community. Hi, my name is Gabrielle Wood and I'm a senior at the Rockdale Magnet School and this is my speech entry. Over 50 years have passed and Dr. King's dream still has not been fulfilled. Let us recognize this truth so that we will never become complacent in this country until racial justice is served. The poison of racism and classism runs deep in our society. Our fight against the willfully ignorant and racist will never end. We must take our fight further than skin deep we must phase out the influences of those in this country who may be willfully ignorant and racist. The United States of America was founded by and for the wealthy white male. In our healthcare system, black women are three times more likely to die during childbirth. For young men of color, police use of force is among the leading causes of death. Black people are incarcerated in state prisons at a rate that is over five times the imprisonment of whites. In the United States, there's a clear racial wealth gap. In 2016, the median net worth of white households was $143,600, while the median net worth of black households was only $12,920. To overcome systemic and institutionalized racism and injustice, it is going to take changing the very blood of this country. Its laws and the institution its laws are meant to support and protect. The dream must live on for 2021 as we fight not only for people, but for a country that does not tolerate social injustice, whether conscious or unconscious, in any aspect of society. To achieve this, we must encourage black generational wealth. We need to ensure that we continue to encourage and provide for minority students to matriculate through college. We need more black leaders. We need more black doctors, scientists, professors, judges, senators, and black business owners. Then we must reach our hands back into our own communities and build them up. We must take the words of the I Have a Dream speech to heart. With this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. Like Dr. King brought our grandparents together during the civil rights movement, we must come together and work together towards the achievement of our dream for 2021. Thank you. The late Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. addressed social injustice but directed the I Have a Dream speech to the demographics and desires of a nation. In the book, The Big Idea, Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryan suggests to us that from the wellspring of imagination, knowledge is acquired, volition is ignited, and achievement is actualized. But lean in just a little closer so I can tell you all that from the wellspring of your dream, knowledge is acquired, volition is ignited, and achievement is actualized. Dr. King dreamed not only for this nation, but he dreamed so that another dream can be birthed out of you and me. A dream for difference, a dream for a launch in one's destiny, and a dream that unlocks your story. 
A Negro spiritual suggests to us that if I can help somebody as I travel along, if I can help somebody with a word or a song, if I can help somebody from doing wrong, no, my living shall not be in vain. My secret is now out. I wrote this speech to tell you all that you have a dream and a story that will help break the chains and curses off of a system that tries to marginalize African-American women and men, that tries to handicap African-American boys and girls from reaching their full goals in their academics, and then labeling them with different deformities and disorders, which is in fact injustice. Joshua told us that when you meditate on God's precepts, his life-giving word impregnates your dream with the big ideas and seeds of destiny that can transform every area of your life. I now prophesy to you all that you will dream. Dr. King's dream wasn't pointless, but was the foundation for you to dream. I decree and declare that Dr. King's dream will give you the assurance to be tenacious in every area of dreaming. The dream lives on for 2021. The architects of our republic wrote the magnificent words of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. They were signing a promissory note. This note was a promise that all men, yes, black men as well as white men, would be guaranteed the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We refuse to believe that the bank of justice is bankrupt. So we've come to cash this check, a check that will give us upon demand the riches of freedom and the security of justice.
Praise God. 
declare it today. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. And I am free. Oh, yes, I am. I am. Praise the Lord. I'm free. Yes, Everybody yes, say, no longer say it. No, no longer bound. Can we have a little Sunday morning church? No, no more. Let's declare it. My soul is resting. You ought to say it too. It's just a blessing. Come on, say it. and for the opportunity to address the congregation this morning. I hope, God willing, that soon we will be able to worship and fellowship together in person. In the meantime, I bear greetings not just from myself, but also from my wife, Dr. Alicia Kramer, and I hope this message finds the entire New Birth family in good health. I know that these are such difficult times, and so many are struggling with disease. So many are struggling financially and economically. Help is on the way and better days are coming. Keep the faith. And please know that we are now turning the page on these last four years of bitter division. We can elevate our eyes to the horizon again and dream about what is possible. And there's no better day for us to discuss those dreams than the day we honor and remember and commit to continuing the legacy and work of Dr. King. Dr. King taught us that a society without violence, without poverty, without racism must be our ambition and it can be built. And now as this darkness recedes and that fog lifts, we have to recommit ourselves to making that dream real. It will be an honor to serve you in the U.S. Senate. And I want to thank everybody, look, whether you were for me or you were against me for exercising that sacred, hard-fought right to vote and participating in our democracy. And I look forward to working for you and alongside you to realize Dr. King's dream, to help build the beloved community here in Georgia, here in America, and around the world. That's society without racism, without violence, without poverty, a politics and a culture founded on empathy, compassion, and decency, love for each other, and a commitment to human rights. Thank you so much for the honor of addressing you. Thank you again, Dr. Bryant. Thank you to the whole New Birth family. Looking forward to seeing you soon. All the best. Much love. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. The nation has been in a tailspin since the sieging on our capital. Ivanka Trump sent out a tweet while the upheaval was rising, thanking the patriots for standing tall. Because of all of the reaction, she immediately deleted that tweet. 
The reality is that the history books will have to record that Martin Luther King Jr. was one of this nation's greatest patriots. Not because he was trying to break down the nation, but he was trying to build it up. Constructive criticisms helped you understand how to make changes in love. And that's what it is that Dr. King committed his entire life to doing. We're grateful because he is a son of a Georgia soil and turned the world upside down simply by trying to make America great. Today, I want to uh, pause and publicly thank God for our newly elected Senator John Ossoff for uh, greeting us on today and keeping the flame on fire. At the end of the service, we'll hear from our newly minted Senator, Reverend Raphael Warnock. Uh, but I want to thank God for new emerging voices, Gabrielle Wood and Darian Johnson, uh, who wrote and spoke from their hearts. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for the young people of New Birth. Uh, we are awarding them, both of them are high school seniors. We're giving them $1,000 scholarships just for participating and being a part of what it is that God is doing. Every revolution happens at the heels and the hands of our young people. Uh, to that end, on the fifth Sunday, you don't want to miss it. Uh, we're having an emerging generations takeover. And God knows there's something about the spirit of new birth that we don't take sides. We always take over. Uh, and this week we took over. Can you help me thank God for an amazing revival that took place this week? I'm telling you, every night we had a kingdom encounter and a kingdom impact. The reality is a lot of America tries to shrink wrap Dr. King into just a dream. But the Honorable Louis Farrakhan said he wasn't killed because he dreamed. He, dream he was killed because he woke up. There are so many of you who have, in fact, found yourself in a slumber. But if you don't put a plan to that dream, It'll never turn into a reality. I've been preaching this entire month under a series of uh, I'm working on something. And whatever it is your dream is, I'm believing uh, that God is going to turn imagination into manifestation. Our intercessors are standing by. Our prayer warriors are on the wall tall. Whatever your dream is, I want you to write it in the chat now because I want to pray for your dream. I want to pray for your idea. I want to pray for the burden that God has given you. Whatever that concept, you're on Facebook, you're on uh, Periscope, you're on YouTube. I want you to write down your dream. Don't be afraid of it. It's not yours. God gave it to you so that you could, in the words of my Muhammad Ali, shake up the entire world. Let me tell you this. There is a difference between a dream and a goal. There's a difference between a dream and a goal. If it is a goal, hear this, it only benefits you. But if it is a dream, somebody else's life ought to be improved, ought to be empowered, and it's got to be impacted. I believe that today I am speaking to dangerous dreamers. Dreamers who believe that you're going to change the entire landscape of your family history. I'm talking uh, to dreamers who believe that single-handedly you are going to destroy generational curses. I am talking to dreamers who are not thinking about bags and belts and trips and shoes, but you're thinking about the old Negro spiritual. If I can help somebody. As I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or with a song, then my living is not in vain. In the studio, would you start clapping your hands for other people's dreams? For Tanya Brigden, I'm believing your dream. Come on, keep clapping that hand for writing children's books. Joy, that you're going to start your own business. Come on, keep clapping your hand. Andrews, that you're going to be a homeowner. Keep clapping that hand that you're going to have a brand for tall women. Come on, keep clapping that hand. Sister Smith, that your book is going to be published. Keep clapping that hand. Beverly, that you're going to be a game changer. Keep clapping that hand. God's going to do something for your dream, something for your children's dream. Come on, keep clapping. Your dream is coming to pass. Your dream is going to be realized. 
Your dream is going to manifest. Your dream is going to happen this year. God is going to give you what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard. If your neighbor won't shout for it, would you celebrate your own dream? Get excited for your own dream. Give God glory for your own dream. I want you to lift up that hand. I'm praying for your dream. God, whatever it is that you have burdened them in their heart, whether it was last night or last year, last month or last week, I pray that you will confirm the dream. Let the dream take legs and feet, arms and hands and begin to manifest. Don't let the dream die with them, but let the dream come alive in their lifetime. God, we trust you with the dream because the enemy has had us live through nightmares, but we believe that a brighter day is coming. And those of you who believe that the dream inside of you is bigger than you, would you give God glory for your dream right now? Come on, I say, give God glory. You're not excited about it. I say, give him glory for your dream right now. We cannot just be hearers of the word, but we've got to be doers also. We believe, here it is, that God's going to do something in the words of my covenant brother, Bishop William Murphy, because we got a seed in the ground. We are putting a mandate on heaven. God, please don't forget me and my dream. Right below you, you'll find all of our prompts here at New Birth. We are a tithing church. We're a tithing church, which means that we are, are honoring God through our giving. That 10% of whatever it is that God gives us, we give back to him. Because we know it won't always be a flourishing season. But sometimes there'll be some lean years. And in those lean moments, the church has got to be the storehouse to be able to take care of those who find themselves between a rock and a hard place. Any of you ever been through a moment where you had to dream about eating? Y'all ain't saying nothing. You had to dream about making sure your children had the sustenance that they needed. You had to dream to believe that it was not always be a place where you had to live with no utilities on. Had to dream while on the bus stop. I am believing what you make happen for other people. God is going to make it happen for you. I better give that to you again. What you make happen for other people. God will make it happen for you. I am of the mind that God doesn't just bless on Sundays, but even on a Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, God will bless. I want to tell you what it is that I do. Every time I receive something, I don't even wait till Sunday. I sow on that day. And I want you to sow with me on this day, believing there's not going to be a day this week where you will not be a recipient of his grace, his glory, and his goodness. So come on, follow me as I follow Christ. Uh, Jesus was the ultimate giver by laying down his life that you and I might live. Isn't it amazing that he's not asking you to sacrifice your pinky? He's just asking you to sacrifice a seed. And so right now, right now, right now, wherever it is that you are, I want you to sow into our house, uh, sow into this ministry, sow into this storehouse, uh, because we believe that giving is the gift that keeps on giving. That when you give, you open up something in heaven. Why? Because God always gives seed to the sower. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. Today is going to be an electric worship encounter. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to invite somebody. I want you to tag somebody. I want you to text somebody. Tell them, come on in the service. We honor Martin Luther King, but we worship the King of Kings. And so I want you to come on into this worship experience uh, because I believe this is going to change everything uh, that you thought of before this moment is going to be shifted in the overdrive uh, after this moment. Our music ministry is going to prepare us for the word of God. And I want you to ripen your hearts. I want you to turn your attention towards heaven. Shut down every unnecessary distraction. And I want you to focus on him. Because God's got a word today for dreamers who are working on something. God's going to bless you. Thank you, Jesus.
Do I have any worshipers out there? Worship is your second nature. It's something that you do. It's something that just comes automatically. It's a natural instinct. Come on, can you lift your voices wherever you are? If you're in this room, lift your voice. If you're at home, lift your voice. And let your worship rise. Let praises rise right here. Come on, give him the best of everything that you have. He's an incredible God, so he deserves an incredible praise. So I lift my hands in the atmosphere, and I give him worship. Hallelujah, we bless your name, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. No one greater than you, Lord. Come on, right here, let's do it together, family. Let praise is right. From the, inside, from the inside, from the inside, from the inside of me, of me. may you delight in the inside, in the yes inside. God, in the inside, in the inside of, me. of me, ask him to come feel come your feel life, my life, my life. life, do it from the inside, from the inside. really need it from the Inside, from the inside of me, set me on, set fire, me on fire, and do it from the inside, from the inside, yes, God, from the inside, from the inside of, me. of me, cause all
again on the screen. Come on. Fill me again. It's simple. We don't have to make it difficult this morning. Fill me again. It's all I really want. It's all I really need. Fill me again. Just want to be filled with love. Just want to be filled. Fill me again. Just want to be filled. 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 Comes, can you just lift your hands wherever you are? Just lift your hands as a form of surrendering everything to God. Say, God, I want to be filled again. In order for me to work on something, I got to be filled. There's a builder inside of you, God. So fill me, Lord, fill me, Lord. Just want to be filled, yeah, yeah. Just want to be filled. Filled with your glory, Lord. Your power, fill with your presence, Lord. Just wanna be filled again. Just wanna be filled again. Be filled again. Just wanna be filled again. Father, in the name of Jesus, fill us again. Touch us from the top of our head down to the soles of our feet those who are feeling disconnected from you, tap them with your finger of care. For those who are in the doldrums of depression, give them a jolt of joy. Those who are swimming in sorrow, rescue them from thoughts of suicide. Those who are dealing with mental illness, I pray that you'll breathe peace into their existence. For those who have become frustrated, Fight the battle for them. Those who are weary in well-doing, give them wings of the morning. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give God glory. He's going to fill us again. I believe that for you. I believe that for myself. I am uh, so grateful for our music ministry, our media ministry, our musicians, our, our techno technological team, all those who are... Uh, are poured and labored to make this day uh, exemplary. I want you to know how much your pastor appreciates you. I want you to join me. I'm continuing in our series. I'm working on something. Would you join me in the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 11? Genesis chapter 11. First book of the Bible. It shouldn't take you that long. Genesis chapter 11, verses 3 through 5. Genesis 11, verses 3 through 5. They said to each other, Come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that they may know our name is great. Otherwise, we'll be scattered all over the face of the earth. I want to preach for a little while today using as a subject, I thought somebody said something. I thought somebody said something. My dear comrades, um, Lauded as a legend of English literature was Charles Dickens. Although he himself had no formal education, he edited a weekly journal for 20 years and wrote 15 novels. The Victorian era claims him as their greatest contributor to culture. Short of crawling from under a rock, not many can claim not to have read a selection from his collection, which includes A Christmas Carol, Oliver Twist, Great Expectations, and A Tale of Two Cities. 
However, the volume that is most difficult to locate is a book he wrote called The Mystery of Edwin Drood. The Mystery of Edwin Drood. The story of a church choir director who is also a drug addict that fell in love with an engaged alto. Edward Drood gets killed, but Dickens dies in real life before he could finish the book. From 1870 to 2021, nobody has been able to figure out who was the murderer of Edwin Drood. Well, we don't know who killed Edward Drood, but we do know that Mitch McConnell killed off the $2,000 stimulus check. We don't know who killed Edward Drood, but we do know that Donald Trump has murdered the Republican Party. We do know in spite of what it is that has happened in the underground current towards voter suppression, nobody was able to massacre the two senatorial seats that Georgia needed to tilt the helm of power. The question that demands to be answered in this hour is who is guilty of murdering your dreams? of assassinating your aspirations and lynching your ambition. If the answer is nobody, then why is your dream not alive? Considered one of the most toxic pieces of cinematography to ever enter into theaters was Gone with the Wind. The epic Civil War drama focuses on the life of a southern plantation during the Civil War and Reconstruction. It vilified blacks and enlarged the ranks of the Ku Klux Klan. And yet, even today, is listed by the Smithsonian as one of the top 10 best American films and the highest earner for that time. Orson Welles was trying to replicate his success by doing a comeback entitled The Other Side of the Wind. It took him 40 years for development because of legal, financial, and political complications. Hear this. Unfortunately, Orson Welles died before it could come to completion. Isn't it amazing? He died trying to produce the other side of wind. There's so many of you who are on a uh, psychological and emotional ventilator because you really don't believe you're about to catch a second wind. But I believe that God is getting ready to send a gust of wind in your direction. And in case you haven't read Holy Writ, the Holy Spirit is like the wind. You don't know which way it's coming. and You don't know where it's going. Charles Dickens died writing a book. Orson Welles died trying to finish a movie. Don't let the last mark of your life's report card be written as incomplete. You gotta finish. Philippians 1 and 6 says, Be confident of this, that he who began a great work in you will carry it out to completion. Before 2021 ends, I need you to hear me. Before 2021 ends, I better give it to you slowly. Before December 31st, you are going to echo Jesus' sixth word from the cross. It is finished. 
that doesn't mean anything if you ain't working on anything. But those of you who believe whatever I am working on before this year is over, I am going to stand over it and declare with all faith it is is finished. Some of you don't believe it, but those of you who feel a conviction in your spirit that whatever I'm working on, I will not die until God gives me a second win to complete my assignment. It's, uh, it's one thing when a person is trying. It's altogether different when it's a whole group of people that are trying. In Genesis chapter 11, everybody on the earth has decided to settle in a place called Shinar. Everybody who is alive in the earth in Genesis 11 says they want to settle in Shinar. Benjamin Elijah Mays, considered the mentor of Dr. King, said, I would rather go to heaven by myself than go to hell following a crowd. You have to get to a place where if everybody I know settles, I refuse to do it. My mother could have been a settler. My father was a settler. My friends were settlers. My line brothers were settlers. But I refused to settle because there's more for me than what other people can see. So I cannot judge my life by other people's low standard. I can't settle. The people of God conspired to build a city. But not only do they want to build a city, they want to build a tower. But I want you to see why they want to build it. It is not because they don't need anywhere to live. It is not because God has not proven to be a provider. They want to build a city and a tower so their name could be great. Not only did they want to build it so their name could be great? Hear this. They wanted to build so they would never have to move again. I am afraid of people who want their names to be so big that they forget that there is a name above every name. We are watching this week the dismantling of a presidency that the New York Times will declare as a asterisk in history. We should have known something was wrong when Trump put his name on every building he built because it was his aspiration for his name to be great. There's something to be said of people who every sentence has got to start with them. You know people, whenever it is that you give your testimony, they want to insert and interject their own accomplishment because they want their name great. The Bible says that in trying to build this city and this tower, they said they're going to do it and make it out of bricks. The problem is where they settled is a place called Shinar. And up until Genesis 11, everything that was constructed was made out of stone. They had to build with bricks. Why? Because no stones were in Shinar. Come here, I got to tell you this. There are those of you who are trying to build something. But what you need to build it is not available. What you need to accomplish it and to conquer it is not at your disposal. God says, I don't want you to get frustrated because you're looking for the supplies that other people had. I'm going to have you build with something else. So they made up in their mind, because stones are not available, we're going to use a brick. And the bricks are critical. Hear this, because in order for the bricks to become solid, They've got to be thrown into fire. It is only after it is thrown into fire that it is proven to be indestructible. 
Pastor, I think you lost me. I'm, I'm eating breakfast and listening to you. Say that again for me, please. It is only when it's thrown in the fire that it becomes indestructible. Because it is the fire that prunes it, that strengthens it, that gives it what it needs to be able to withstand every level of attack. Pastor, did you just say it's only when you're thrown in the fire that you become a brick? That's what I'm trying to tell you. Come here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They had to be thrown in the fire. So that when Trump, I mean Nebuchadnezzar, tried to make them bow down, they said, I don't care what evangelical preachers say. I'm still going to take a stand for the oppressed and marginalized and the disenfranchised because I've been thrown in the fire. Stacey Abrams is a brick house. She's a brick house because she saw a gubernatorial election robbed and stolen from her. But she refused to go in depression and sing the blues. She understood that it don't matter what people try to do. I may be delayed, but I will not be denied. I need somebody to know, even if you didn't get it two years ago, you going to get it two years from now because there's a brick in your life Shaka Khan said through the fire to the limit I need some of y'all ain't always been saved to the wall I'm ready to risk it all all I had to do was go through some fire to understand what I was made out of I realize I, I got generations that don't know who Shaka Khan is y'all forgive me <laughs> and I, you got your kids watching with you this is a uh, a multi-generational church and they, 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 they got no idea what I'm talking about that you need um, the bricks to be able to withstand the attacks of the enemy bring your children to me real quick let me preach to them because they don't know Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego shame on you but I, I'll help you they don't know them three Hebrew boys Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego but perhaps they know um, three little pigs uh, there, there, there was one pig that tried to build his house out of a straw. And there was another pig that made his house out of sticks. And then there was a third pig that made his house out of bricks. There was a wolf that came to the house that was made out of sticks. And said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. And the pig said, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. He huffed and he puffed and he blew that house down. He went next door and went to the house that was made out of straw. And said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. He said, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. He huffed and he puffed and he blew that house down. But he got to the third house. And that house was made out of brick. And he said, little pig, little pig, let me come in, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. And you know what happened. The wolf blew COVID-19, blew unemployment, blew layoffs, blew depression, blew unemployment. But you're still here. After all that you've been through, you're still standing saying, look at me, I'm a testimony. I didn't make it on my own, but somebody prayed for me. Hallelujah. Let the enemy blow. Let the enemy blow. Let the enemy blow, but I'm still standing. Hallelujah. I need you to lay hands on yourself and just shout out loud, I'm still standing. Oh, come on, say it out loud. The devil thought he had me, but I got away. I'm still standing. Not only, not only did they use bricks, but for the very first time they used tar, substance known as bitumen. The bitumen, here it is, is what you applied in between the bricks just to keep it together. Last night, Dr. Dre was released 
out of ICU having suffered a brain aneurysm from the stress of going through an expensive divorce. Because you can get to a place in life where you're so stressed that you feel like you've fallen apart. I'm talking to 50 people. It may not even be you. Maybe it's just people in this studio who got to look back over your life and say, God, I don't know how, but you kept me together. I almost lost my mind, but, but you kept me together. I, I wanted to hurt some people, but, but you kept me together. I, I was about to throw in the towel, but you kept me together. I, I'm thankful under his grace that God kept me together. I, I refuse to quit. I, I refuse to blow out my brains. I, I refuse to go back. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me together. They said, they said they wanted to name it because they wanted their name great. But they also wanted to build, hear this, because they wanted to stay where they are. I got to give some shattering news to some people that when you study the footprint of God, God will never allow you to stay where you're comfortable. God help me here. He'll push you. He'll shove you around. You think you under attack. You ain't under attack. You under transition. God is shifting you into some places that you never thought you would be, that you never wanted to be, that was never on your hit list to go. But God said, who do you think you are? You ain't the boss of me. I tell you when you stay and when you go. In verse number five, the Bible says that uh, the Lord came down to see what they were building. Now don't forget that they're building a city and a tower that has to reach heaven. And then look at verse number five. The Lord comes down to see it. They were building to reach heaven. But God came down to see it. No matter how big they thought they got, they were never on his level. He had to come down to see what they were working on. Furthermore, I want to argue to you this morning that they were building, hear this, without a permit. They were working on something, but never got God's permission. Some of you are having your construction site stopped because God never approved your project. He never greenlit what you were going after. And here you are thinking you're doing something without God's go-ahead. So God got to come down. Let me see what you're working on. Who told you to do this? Who authorized this to happen? Who were you listening to that you thought this was a good idea? What, what? You, 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 you listening to family members? You listening to somebody in a salon? You, you listening to the reviews of somebody online? I never told you that's what you supposed to do. And here you are building and can't figure out why you can't make headway. Why you can't finish. Why it's always start and stop. Because you never ask God, was it okay? I got to ask you something. I've got to insert. I've got to interject something. Can you take one moment and pray for God's permission? I want you to lift that hand. Hallelujah. Because you're working on something that's illegal. You're working on something that's not up to heaven's code. You're working on something that is unnecessary because you never got the go-ahead from God. God, I need you to tell me if I should keep building or whether I should bury it. 
Some of y'all don't like this. Should I keep building or should I bury it? I, I thought somebody said something. Who told you it was a good idea? Who told you this was the right time for you to try it? Who told you you were built for this? Who told you this was in the plans for your life? Oh, I thought somebody said something. If God didn't say it, why are you doing it? If God hadn't signed off on it, why are you trying it? If God didn't say it's all right, why are you still spinning your wheels? I want you to go in the text with me, please. Now I want you to look at verse number four. Media ministry, if you can put it on the screen for me. I need verse number four. I need it on the screen for me real quick, please. Genesis. Hallelujah. I'm almost finished. Chapter 11, verse number four. Watch what they say. Come, let us. Come, let us build a city and a tower. Thank you, sir. Say, so come let us build a city and a tower. That's number four. Meeting minister, help me. Drop down uh, verse number five. I want you to look at verse number five. Let's get ready to mess you up. The Lord came to see the city and the tower that the people were building. Pastor Lynch, you got to see this in verse number eight. Verse number eight, it says this, the Lord scattered them all over the earth. Look at verse number eight. The Lord scattered them all over the earth and they had to stop building the city. I went too fast. I got to give it to you again. I don't need different translations. Whatever translation you look at, it's going to say this. Verse number four, they building a city and a tower. Verse number five, the Lord came to see the city and the tower that they're building. Verse number eight, the Lord scatters them all over the earth. Here it is. And they stopped building the city. I wish y'all would wake up. I'm preaching better than y'all are shouting. They're building a city and a tower in verse number four. In verse number five, the Lord comes to see them building the city and the tower. Verse number eight, the Lord scatters them everywhere and they stop building the city. I got to show you this. I got to get out of here. The Lord in verse number eight, for all these years, we've been preaching the text wrong. Been preaching it incomplete. We have done damage to the text. Verse number eight, watch what the Lord does. The Lord stops the construction of the city. Yeah, that's verse number eight. He never, Khalees, stops construction of the tower. Mm -hmm. All right, I think I lost you. All right. He stops the construction of the city, never stops the construction of the tower. Do you know what went wrong? What went wrong with them is what's going wrong with many of you that can hear my voice. You assume falsely that when God stops one area of your life, that he wants you to stop everything. The devil is a liar. Whatever it is that God cut off, rejoice for that part. But whatever it is you're supposed to build, you got to go to another level. You got to go to a higher place. You got to keep stretching yourself to another dimension. I need somebody to shout for what you ain't working on no more. I need you to give God glory for what you ain't got to put no energy into. I need you to shout for what is not going to eat up your time. But the thing I got to build, I will not die until I get it up. I will not die until I go high. I want you to lift that hand. Your job is to build something bigger than you. God, I wish y'all would shout over that. Your job is to build something bigger than you. If it's your size, it ain't from God. 
If it's on your level, that is not what he's calling you to do. But those of you who are expecting God to help you to build something that scares the living daylights out of you, would you lift up that hand and open up your mouth? Hallelujah. J.J. Harrison said an incredible God deserves an incredible praise. If you're working on something small, give him small worship. But if you're working on something big, I need you to open up your mouth and cry out loud. Come on, I can't hear no worshipers. I said, if you're working on something big, I got to get it up. I got to get it up. I got to get it up. Hey, I need that hand lifted. I got to tell you this. The reason why the tower is so important. Lift that hand. The reason why the tower is so important. Hallelujah. You ain't going to believe this, sailor. The reason why it's so important is that building a tower, hear this, with no scaffold. He said, you are getting ready to build for 50 of y'all that are shout. You're going to build with no support. God, I can't hear nobody. You're going to build with nothing propping you up. You're you going to build with no financial backing. You're going to build without the approval of man. God is going to help you to build. I speak of every lifted hand. I speak of every lifted hand that God, as of this moment, will have you to stop working on stuff, hear this, that doesn't deserve you. God, I can't hear nobody. You're going to have to stop working on things and people that do not deserve your energy or your attention. you got to work on something that points the glory to God. And I'm believing by faith that God is going to meet your need, that God is going to exceed your expectation. And those of you who believe before the year is over, Something big is going to be built in your life. Would you give God a shout of thanksgiving for it? Would you give him a shout of thanksgiving? I said give him a shout of thanksgiving. So hear this from Genesis 11 until 2021. The tower has gone incomplete. From Genesis 11 until this day, January 17, it never got finished. From people who didn't know what to do, hear this, with partial permits. There's some of you who only know how to go after God when you get everything you want. But will you be faithful when God says no to some things? and yes to something else. You ought to thank God for what he shut down. You ought to thank God for what he didn't allow to keep going. You ought to thank God for what he cut off right at the edge before it could mushroom. I want to invite you, if I can, to be a part of a church that's working on something. Be a part of a ministry that's building something that will point to the glory of God doesn't have my name on it. It has his name on it. Those of you, here it is, with like-minded faith. The book of Nehemiah said, and they had a mind to build. Those of you who are working on something, this is your church. Creatives, dreamers, entrepreneurs, innovators. This is the kind of ministry you need to be in. Those of you who refuse to settle, this is where God wants to plant you wants to blossom you, wants to bloom you. I'm telling you straight up and down, I want to be your pastor. I'm telling you, I ain't even playing with you today. I want this to be your church. I want to be absolutely clear. Most important to me is your name is in the book of life. And you have surrendered your will over to the will of God. I want you to do it right now. 
Our prayer counselors are standing by. Our team wants to bring you in and be a part of our family. If you'll follow the prompts and directives at the bottom of the screen, I want you to do that. Now, let me say this to you, to all of the dreamers, all of the dreamers today, I want you to invest in your dream. The whole world is going to celebrate Dr. King's dream. But I want your dream to be recognized in heaven today. The late Dr. Miles Monroe said this, that the greatest ideas, let me now insert, the greatest dreams are in the cemetery because people die with what they were supposed to live through. I don't want you to die with your stuff incomplete. I don't want you to die with your work undone. As a consequence, here's what I want you to do. I want you to invest in your own dream. I want you to sow into your own dream. You could have A1 credit. I'm telling you, have a black American Express credit card. I can take you on Tuesday morning to see the president of Wells Fargo, Citizens Trust, Bank of America. We lay out your business idea. They still want you to put 10% in it. Why? Because the bank has the mind enough to know if you don't invest in your dream, then why should we? I want every person who can, every person who can, I want you to get a gift of 40, every dreamer. This is your first investment into your next business, into your next investment, into your next enterprise, into your next concept. I want you to sow that seed of 40 even now. Don't hesitate. Don't deliberate. Please don't wait. This is for dreamers. Whether you're giving on GiveLify, push pay, text to give, whether you're writing a check and you're mailing it to the church or dropping it off, I need the dreamers. And the brothers of Joseph made the announcement that I now have to echo. Behold, the dreamers are coming. I believe that for you. The dreamers are coming. The dreamers are coming. Do you hear me talking about you? The dreamers are coming. I want you to get that seed in your possession. I want you to believe God for it. I want you to expect great things. I'm grateful to have this privilege. I'm going to be unpacking of this concept a little bit more one-on-one -on -one with you on Tuesday night uh, at 7.30. It's our first official day back to group therapy. Uh, it's going to be an exchange that's really going to recalibrate your thinking and your thought process Tuesday night at 7.30. Make sure that you are present and a part of what God is doing. Uh, I want you, please, our announcements are coming up. I want to share those with you, as well as our newly elected senator, uh, Senator Reverend Raphael Warnock, wants to extend greetings to each and every one of you. I'm appreciative to be your pastor, and I'm excited to hear when you declare out loud, it is finished. God bless you, and we'll see you soon. New Year's Revival was a huge success. Three big nights of music and ministry. Kicking off night one, special musical guest Bishop Hezekiah Walker. Praise, 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 to our God. To our God. With a timely word from Pastor Jonathan Miller. As a matter of fact, I believe this word is convicting to, for many of you because you know there's more to you than what you're doing. Pastor Jonathan Miller, it's our New Year's Revival. Then on night two, kicking the night off, Corn Hawthorne. Let's go, won't he do it? Hey, he said he would. It's Corn Hawthorne with a powerful word by Dr. Yvonne K. The same reason the devil wants you dead is the same reason I want you alive. It's our New Year's revival. But then we kept the energy going on night three with special musical guest Jonathan McReynolds. Performing some of his popular hits. Bishop Rudolph McKissick Jr. ended the revival on fire. But I came to tell you, if you give him the boat, he's already got the fish waiting on you. It's our New Year's revival. Get your copy of all three exciting nights at the Call to Conquer bookstore. Online or Saturdays from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. And you can pick up the January Book of the Month, Pivot by Jenny Blake. Available at Call to Conquer. 
hour January 30th back to school backpack pull up has been postponed to a later date continue to pray as we navigate the challenges of this school year but hey check this out it's returning this Tuesday it's group therapy 7 30 p.m. Dr. Brian has a powerful message on dreams and how they impact our lives and don't forget our king's table will be closed now through January 30th and will resume Saturday February 6th if you're in need of groceries please contact the Atlanta Community Food Bank at acfb.org or text find food to 888-976-2232 we'll see you at the king's table Recently, it was announced that DeKalb County faculty, students, and staff would be returning to in-person learning on January 5th. Well, New Birth Church, along with more than 100 people, rallied together several times in Stone Mountain to urge DeKalb County School District officials to delay plans for face-to-face -face learning in January. Then, DeKalb County teachers and representatives attended morning worship. Dr. Bryan sent up a powerful prayer, and all demanded that DeKalb County administrators delay the start of in-person instruction until COVID its numbers improve as a result of prayers and actions from new birth and dr bryant superintendent cheryl watson has announced during monday school board meeting that the district will push back in-person learning by a month to february but only if the county positivity rate is lower than 10 percent awesome news new birth and that's gonna do it for our video announcements